All righty. Oh, I've been extremely busy lately, so sorry for the delays in videos for anybody that was actually <laughs> waiting with bated breath. Uh, <laughs> my heart goes out to you. <laughs> um, today's video, a um, couple of things uh, I wanted to talk about. I do believe Games Workshop just raised the prices again. Um, and then looking at the availability of the Warhammer Old World stuff, I think they're heading into an end game of selling collectible models instead of the wargaming company and then selling their IP. Their money is with their IP. And I think selling models is a risk in that they're going to lose money on things they don't sell, which is why they, they don't make enough um, supply for the demand. Everything's out of stock. So. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of things I, I kind of want to touch on here is um, uh, what my reaction to that's going to be um, and, and again it's their company they do what they want how they they're a business they're going to see they're going to make as much money as they can um, in the way that they see fit which is fine with me but to me it's a hobby and <clears throat> I love the law um, you know especially the old world stuff I just came back to this hobby after, um, you know, being away for quite a while. And I played a few games of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And, and it's kind of, when you come back to something, you see the flaws, or you remember the flaws. The rose-tinted glasses come off. And you, you're like, oh, yeah, I had to deal with this. And the whole bugger I had to do. We had to deal with that then. And, and I took... I've been, you know, my normal day job, I've been working pretty hard. And then I took a rest of, of painting and modeling for a week and, and started playing Battletech. Look at him. Um, and I remember, you know, there are other IPs out there and other game systems out there. And here's the thing that hit me while I was just going down that rabbit hole. There are games that have come out since, you know, Warhammer went away. <clears throat> that maybe are good systems to use, but you can still use the Warhammer law, if you see what I mean. So I've been really thinking hard about trying new systems. Um, some of the comments have put forward the names of games, you know, that, that are also very good. Um, so I've ordered myself Frostgrave for Skirmishing and Oathmark. And... So I'm going to give those a try. Um, I, I should have them this weekend. So <clears throat> as soon as I do, I'll, I'll, I'll look through it and maybe do a review, um, play a couple of games. And then I want to try and do a two battles, one with one system, one with the other, with you know as much the same forces as I can and see how they kind of match up um, as far as speed of play, enjoyment of play, um, you know, what the results are, that kind of thing. So um, I'm looking forward to trying that. So um, as, as close as I can, as, as near as possible, probably with Oathmark, because Frostgrave is uh, more of a, a skirmish game, um, I'm led to believe. I've watched quite a few battle reports, actually. So anyway, And also that, that ticks the old d d kind of box as well, you know, with, with the narrative campaigns, which is the type of game that I prefer. So there are campaign modes and all kinds of things that opens new possibilities. So <clears throat> that's my end game is I've got my Warhammer Fantasy Battle um, latest version. You know, they got me for that. That's fine. Um, I don't mind paying for it. Um, I've got sprues and sprues of plastic miniatures I won't use because I bought the starter box, but that's fine too. I've done my bit to support the company. Um, I would have bought the cards. They're gone now. They're not just out of stock. I couldn't even find them on the site. So for, for a multi-million dollar company that can't even keep cards in stock, um, it doesn't bode well. So the next part that I wanted to talk about is because of all the, uh, the to-in and throw-in about um, female custodies and if Henry Cavill is going to, you know, selling their IP, I think... That's the road they're going to go down. 
And I think they are going to change what we know as Warhammer, especially the 40,000 guys, um, to fit into what everybody now refers to as modern audiences, which, again, it's their IP, not mine. Um, and I think, I really do think it's going to go the way of Rings of Power, in which you are going to have maybe people that have, people that aren't invested in the law and the background watching it as a popcorn thing and, you know, enjoying it. And the people that have followed it for years, um, you know, expecting all the minutiae and the details and, you know, are going to be disappointed. I think that's how it's going to pan out because there are times they are a-changing and, and, you know, you can't stop it. Um, so I've got some notes. So I guess my first question, going back to um, <coughs> the IP video, excuse me, I got kind of a cold thing going on, um, is I asked, well, <laughs> Why are there 500 producers on shows these days? You know, it, it's... So I actually took the time you now to go and look at the notes to see what it is that a producer actually does. What is, what is, what is their job? And sadly, <laughs> they play a crucial role in the development, production, and management of television programs. Um, so they're really in their... Uh, let's say, their area of what they do. Um, number one, concept development. There. Yeah. So producers often conceive the initial idea for a show or work closely with writers to develop the concept. Well, the concept's already there. But, again, you're going to get people that are not involved, you know, want to add things. I have meetings with people in companies where you get high ups in there throwing out an idea that they are not qualified to have. And I know that sounds horribly snobby, but every company has specialists. And once you get one person in one department throwing an idea out that, that is not in their, their purview, it, it's part of someone else's, and you can see the eyes in their head start to roll. But because it's been put out there, now it has to be talked about and maybe developed and so that is scary number two is financing and budgeting the reason that's scary is if they don't get their own way they pull their financing and you know they pull their funding because they do for a lot of producers other people funding it or have ties to the people funding it and everybody has their agenda they have the things that they want or they think they want to see in the production. Um, they also hire the crew and cast. Again, um, if you get the wrong production team, you're going to get the wrong crew and cast to make the project the way it's been envisioned by the fans. So, um, and also script development is under there. Creative direction is under there. Production oversight, day-to-day -day management, and then marketing, production, so, uh, post-production. So, you know, post-production, things get left on the cutting room floor. They decide what gets left on the cutting room floor. So, basically, all those hundreds of producers are the people that shape the end product in every single creative aspect, which scares the absolute crud out of me because if the only person that Warhammer has going to bat for them. You know, the fans have one person going to bat, which is Henry Cavill. And he's already quit Witcher because he couldn't get his way. So I don't know how he's going to get his way, should he want to, with the Warhammer 40K stuff. Um, you know, he is a big name, but Again, if they throw enough money at it, they can get any big name. He was replaced in The Witcher by another big name. So people that were not invested in the lore of The Witcher, you know, yeah, it sucks having it changed, but you get over it. 
you know? Um, so that's what producers do. And then once that happens, I'm not trying to burst your bubble, but um, you look at retcon, like has already started, and that's what the hoo-ha is. I mean, when we look at ret shows at retcon, and, and, I mean, I guess I only watch science fiction stuff famously, mostly. Um, but they're the ones that seem to get hit the most, seems to me. I might be wrong. <clears throat> so, number one, look, look, Star Wars, obviously, top of the list. All of that canon material, as soon as Disney got hold of it, threw it out the window so that they could do a 180 and change the direction. Um, my opinion, for the worst, you know, but younger, you know, maybe younger people like it. I don't know. Honestly, I don't care. I can choose to watch it or not watch it. Doctor Who, again, totally retconned. Um, he's, you know, he is not a Time Lord anymore. Since the 60s, it's, it's had good lore, good story. No, you know, no. Nope. New producers come in. He changed it all. Um, let's see, Star Trek. That's had God knows how many retcons. The X-Files went through retcons. I mean, the list goes on and on. So the Ring of Power is, doesn't stick to the law at all. Um, and even Lord of the Rings, the movie, Peter Jackson's movie, Lord of the Rings. Um, I mean, that came under credit. Glorfindel's replaced by Arwen. Arwen does a lot of the things that Glorfindel did in the book, or at least saving Frodo and stuff. So there is pressure from, from producers, and it seems to me lately a lot more, they get a lot more control than they used to. Seems to me there's a lot more retconning going on than there used to be. So we're going to look at the reasons given for the retcons and the changings um, of these shows. Stop me if you see a pattern. So Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm subsequent changes Star Wars law generate considerable discussion. Yada, yada, yada. Discussion's a good word. Um, the reasons given for making the changes to the law are creative freedom, appealing to new audiences, marketability and merchandising, narrative evolution, continuity and canon, cultural and social influences. So, look at the reasons for Doctor Who. Creative freedom, audience engagement, expanding the universe, wow. Updating for modern audiences, canonical flexibility, and the rings of power. Reasons for its departure from Tolkien's legendarium. Creative interpretation, expanded universe, appealing to wider audiences, commercial considerations, licensing and rights, evolution of fantasy genre. So, basically, it's the same old arguments time after time. And really, what I get from this is at least what I, and I'm, I'm an old curmudgeon, so what I hear is people coming along with very crappy track records of, you know, wanting to make their mark and knowing better than good established creativity. The creativity is there. The law is there. It's attracted a large audience without them. But yet they feel that they can change it for the better for modern audiences. I don't know who this modern audience is. And, and you know, if you look at how a lot of these, I mean, Doctor Who was at its height before these changes happened. Then it went into the garbage. Uh, Star Wars has you know, a lot of those shows have just horribly, I think there's like two good ones and the rest are like at best middling. Um, Rings of Power, I mean, my God, that thing tanked. All that money just thrown away. And, it, and it's a shame. That's the thing. I mean, it, it's, it's frustrating as a fan when you, you have all this great stuff and somebody hands it to people that don't understand it. Um, 
and they want to make it about their view of the world, not, you know, the law's view of itself. So I don't have a lot of confidence. You know, we were all happy about Henry Cavill, Warner, why I'm a 40K, yada, yada. And I did this in the last video. I'm just rehashing it, kind of. Um, and I don't know why we were happy about it, but, um, you know, the track record of, of, of what, you know, modern production's like. Although, you know. So, their end game is to sell their IP. And they're pricing themselves out of the market um, so that it will eventually be sell one Space Marine for $250 million. That's where they're heading. It's just the price is going to keep going up. The, the, the barrier to new players is already, you know, out there. The Warhammer Old World was aimed at people like me that had nostalgia and a bit of spending power. Um, you know, that's the final, let's get some more blood out of that turnip. And then, but, you know, they, they are, there's going to be less and less players. And they're still going to want to make more and more money. So they're going to charge the fewer players more money to keep the profits, to keep the shareholders and lose more players. And it's just, I give them, I don't give them, what? Well, it depends. I mean, if their IP sells and it takes off mainstream, I may get like a Marvel Universe when it used to be good. Um, yeah, they'll be around for a long time. Or they'll sell it in total to, you know, someone like Disney. Or, I don't know. I can't see them lasting five to ten years as a wargaming company with these prices. Um, it's going to have fewer and fewer and fewer players. And the prices are going to have to just keep going up and up and up. Although I don't know why. Um, things. I looked it up. I tell you, I got a quote on a, on a, uh, on a plastic injection. <clears throat> if I had made 100,000 plastic sprues... Those screws would have cost me each, with the tooling and everything else, they would have cost me $1.75 a sprue. That's kind of cheap. When you're going to sell, what, well, you get four sprues in, let's say, Bretonia, I don't know, and they're selling them four sprues for like 60 bucks or something stupid like that. Um, you know, this, it, the thing that really <laughs> peed me off when they announced the price hike, is they were trying to say, oh, we're on the same boat as you, food's gone up, and do, do, do. they're a multi-million dollar company, get over yourselves. So basically, it's just a quick update in Iran, and Battletech, uh, Rogue Tech mod on Battletech is, and I'm gonna try and get some painting videos done, um, and then I'm going to, I should get Oathmark this weekend. I'm working this weekend, but then next week, hopefully, I should be able to get through Oathmark um, and then do a comparison. And then do a couple of kingdom lists in Oathmark that are based in the old world, because this channel is back to the old world. So um, we'll see how that goes, and see if that's a legit thing. Maybe just change this up so that I can appeal to a wider audience, expand my universe, what other rubbish is in here, change my creative direction, move into post-production after this, so thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, or the Inquisition will come pay you a little visit.